What does a buyer advocate do? Well, today I got my mate in, Andre Pereira from Bright Advocates, to tell us just that. The one thing I got out of this is it's a really important point, and that is that a lot of buyers don't actually know what they want until they go to, to the buyer agent. And the one bit of gold I got out of this is that actually a real professional will help you through this so that you've got clarity with what you actually want. Because if you go into the process without any clarity, it's gonna come back and you're gonna change your mind. You're gonna go through quite a fair bit of stress potentially because you're thinking about, did I make the right decision or not? Watch that through to the end because that is one little bit of gold that I got out of this conversation. Apologies for the video on my end, guys. A Zoom recording, it was not my friend on that day. I'd love to hear your comments. If you've got any questions below about buying a property, put them down in the comments and what we'll do is we'll get Andre to answer any questions you have. All right, cheers. Andre, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for inviting, Will. No worries. I uh, thought I'd get you on because buyer agents or buyer advocates, they are used quite a lot these days it's a growing industry people don't want to deal directly with a selling agent for the purchase of a property and i thought you, i'd get you on because people kind of know what buyer agents do they kind of have an idea about some of the benefits they provide but it's not really that straightforward a lot of the time especially when we're dealing with huge transactions large sums of money why don't you just explain to the audience a little bit what a standard buyer agent does or buyer advocate does? So a buyer's agent or buyer's advocate is a, a licensed real estate agent that is uh, acting on behalf of the buyer. So a real estate agent does, is actually a selling agent, right? So he's selling the property and represents the vendor in the transaction whilst buyer's agent represents the buyer. So a big part of our job is uh, find uh, creating clarity to the clients in terms of their brief, right? From that, we can start uh, fine-tuning the search to their specific requirements and needs and wants, right? And of course, considering budgets. And then we start searching for property and searching for property can have different channels, like the online portals is the most common one, but you know, we work with database of agents. We call the agents and try to find more opportunities of market, pre-market. And then when we find something, we provide a full assessment on the property in terms of value and our professional opinion of the property, right? And how it will perform. After that process is done, if the client wants to go ahead, we start negotiations with the real estate agent. So different properties have different campaigns. So there's different strategies in terms of negotiating and getting a deal across the line. And of course, at the same time, vetting for our client. And that can be done by adding conditions on the contract and also negotiate the price really. Okay, so let me summarize. Buyer agent will help the buyer find the property they wanna buy negotiate on it. What else are they doing? Yeah, so I think uh, an, a, a big value that it's not really taken in consideration a lot of times is our experience and our perspective in the marketplace, right? And a good buyer's agent is not just a, an order taker that uh, the client comes to them and asks them, Andre, I want this, and we just go and hunt, right? A good buyer's agent has to hear that and really understand exactly what stage that the client is in their property journey and also ask the right questions to understand what potential future stages the client will be in and I'll help them predict that those stages and also adapting the brief for those future stages that sometimes they're not aware right so I think their perspective on the home buying journey or the property investment journey is really important that we can give that value to the client and usually a client is not aware of that. And an example, especially with home buyers, a young couple looking to buy their first home, as an example, and they don't have kids, they don't know what it means to live in a home with, you know, two or three kids, right? So you can quickly outgrow the home. Asking the, those questions to the those buyers and help them predicting that future stage can help them buy something that is already a bit future proof for them. So they don't have to sell and buy in the next three, four years, but they can hold on to a bit longer, which will help with capital growth and avoid selling and buying costs, right? Which can add up a lot. I kind of look at it uh, because we're, we have kind of similar businesses. They're kind of in the same industry and they're part of the same process. I look at that kind of advice side basically you could almost divide that process the buying process up into two parts there's the part where the client's actually still trying to figure out 
what they want. And then there's the part where where they execute So on their plan. So they figure out what they want, then they execute. The way I look at it is the actual job of uh, like a mortgage broker or a buyer agent helps them execute on their plans. But what a good professional will do, a good buyer agent or mortgage broker will, will actually work on the on the front half as well to help these clients actually figure out what they want because a lot of the time even if they have a good idea and even if they're well researched they're still questioning themselves a lot of the time because at the end of the day these things they're, they're big transactional value but they're, they're big for our clients because obviously they've got to move on to the next stage of life and they're going to live in this property so they want to make sure they're making the right decisions kind of a good point you make up there and that is that if you're the customer like if you're if you're bringing on a buyer agent you kind of need to be picky who you bring on and this is why trust is such a big thing in, in these things because if you bring on someone that just wants to buy a house for you and they're not super worried in in what you actually want and helping you clarify what you want then you might go through the process and then not be happy or even worse, you could have that thing where there's a lot of indecision and that makes it hard for an everyone. Yeah, and especially a lot of times properties uh, purchased amongst two parties, right? Usually a couple uh, that are buying poor, uh, property or their home or the investment. And their perspective of what a home means for them is very can be quite different. And what I found also uh, our process is that my role a lot of times is help them clarify that brief understanding priorities and, you know, mediate also between uh, the couple to make sure that we are all on the, in the same page. Because when people are not in the same page, that's when it, the process can be quite lengthen, lengthening and, and um, confusing too. And after they get carried with emotions and there's something called the buyer fatigue, right? That they get tired of such a property and after they just buy whatever, just to get it done. You want to avoid that and you want to be clear in terms of what are the priorities for that purchase right actually that the husband and wife it is a great one because at the end of the day if you don't get that clarity up front probably what's going to happen is later on in the process once a lot of effort and time has been expended is someone's going to put their hand up or there's going to be tension between the couple like i always say with my clients is the right answer for them is the right answer for them. It's just a matter of getting them certain about what the pros and cons and what their situation is so that they can make a decision that kind of not too much based on emotion, as you said, and more about the situation and, and their future needs. Once they can make a decision on that, what they do, hopefully they go ahead with me and they do something. If not, that's fine. I'm always fine by that because it's getting them to a, to a better place. Yeah, that's right. And and even like with an investment uh, journey, right? I investing in property, right? Somebody can come to you and say, hey, Will, I want to buy an investment property, right? And the easier thing to do as professionals like, yeah, we'll take the order, we'll prepare everything. Yeah, you can go and buy. But also understanding like what are the goals? What, why are the reasons behind of purchasing that investment property? And what's the end goal? Because the end goal is never own an investment investment property, right? An investment serves a purpose, right? Understanding that purpose and, and helping the client exploring different options in terms to achieve the purpose, right? Rather than just buying investment property, for example. So that's a big part of what we do, isn't it? hundred percent. It's always hard when you, people are emotionally driven and I, I'm sure you see it with your clients. When it comes to finance and, and property, quite often driven by emotion. So part of the role of of the, the expert or the advisor in there or the consultant, whatever you want to call it, is to be questioning these people. And it's not, not a matter of me judging them. It's a matter of them getting them to question themselves. Yeah. Another thing that just jumped to mind that like, uh, because you've mentioned about that, people can be quite emotional, right? About that. Even with investments, I've seen that a lot, right? Professional like us on the ground. And when it comes to that point of almost closing the deal, right? When you start negotiating and emotions are at a high level, real estate agents are really good at keep using those emotions to drive the price up. And we're there to kind of strip those emotions, right? And serve as a buffer to help them not overpay. Even last weekend, client was willing to go over 30K over what I actually thought 
we could get it for. And I just say like, let's just go under. And we, we bought it for 30K less, right? So that's a big part of the work, how we can help clients, yeah. I also just thought about the, the ones where people are buying and selling, like when, when they're upgrading or downgrading or, or whatever, downsizing, that's really important as well. I might get you back on to talk about vendor, vendor advocacy as well, because you do um, help your clients out with that who are in that position when they're, when they're trying to upgrade or downgrade because that's another thing that is not very well known about. More than happy to, Will. Thanks for your time, Andre. Andre's details will be in the description if you need a good buyer agent on your side.